What's up, y'all? Chris Manola in the squad, your personal ISO chain and fitness vlogging channel. Today, we're gonna cover ISO tension, what that means and what it is, also how it pertains to our ISO chain workout, because believe me, it does. Shout out to Raymond Green. Bro, you are awesome for bringing this to our attention. This is a game changer, in my opinion, for the ISO chain. But before we get into that, we're gonna play a game. Truth or dare? You gotta ask me a truth, ask me in the comment section below, or you can dare me to do something on the ISO chain. Whatever it is, comment down below. The video is out, I'm gonna see how many people want me to do a truth and how many people want me to do a dare, and whichever one wins is the one I'll do. So whatever the truth is, I'll answer that question. And if there's more dares, then I'll answer the dare that I think is the most interesting one, I guess. So let's get into ISO tension. All right, you ready for this? Here's what ISO tension is. Man, what's this dude doing? All he's doing is flexing. Yeah, that's it. That's what ISO tension is. It's flexing. Taking all the fitness jargon and exercise science out, you're flexing. Flexing the mirror, tightening up the muscles in question. Cause you think about it, right? What are we doing in the ISO chain? We are under tension without any movement. So ISO tension, right, is self-generated tension. So right now I'm tightening up my form. Bicep is coming along for a ride a little bit. Tighten up my form, see it? Okay, you hold it. Believe it or not, that does make you stronger. What is it lacking? It's lacking loading reflex. We don't know how much energy to give that because there's no magical number associated with the four. Before we get into the science, I want to tell you guys about my first introduction to isotension, which is actually pretty funny. So who here remembers Ricky Lake? You remember Ricky Lake? So this was years ago, back when I lived with mom. We were watching a Ricky Lake show and she had this bodybuilder dude, this black bodybuilder dude, Ball. I remember he was bald. Um, come on the show, and they were asking him some questions. I don't know. I was I was young. I might have been a teenager at the time. I don't even know. But I remember he took off his shirt. Everybody was like, oh! And he did the the thing with his chest where he goes like. I was like, how does he do that? Like. How is he doing that? And so I remember being like young, I had absolutely nothing. I was a skinny rail. So I was just like, mom, how is. How is he doing that? I don't know, like, how is he moving just his chest like that? Isotension and mind muscle connection go hand in hand because once you know, once your mind knows to send the signal to that chest. All right, so Paul Wade's isometric manual calls isotension loadless training. You can find it on page 214. It's really interesting. At first I didn't know, these were all new terms for me when I was uh, reading the initial go through of uh, the isometric manual. So low this is a new term. We're tensing that muscle against their antagonist muscle group. So for example, when we're tensing the arm like I did earlier, here, right now I'm tensing the bicep. The tricep is coming along for the ride. Agonist, antagonist. What's interesting about it and the manual explain this is that we can do loadless training whenever. We could do it at the supermarket while we're waiting in line. It'd be kind of weird though, like just, how's it going guys? I'm good. You okay there, bud? Yep. That is training. They are under load. Your own posing and bodybuilding, yes, it'll hit just like that. Posing and bodybuilding, what is that? That's isotension. I wonder if they realize that they're doing it. They probably do. I would, I would assume that they do. But if they didn't, that's what they're doing. They're flexing. Their muscles are under tension. Now you can see everything. And when we're performing on the ISO chain, notice that we get all super vascular and stuff like this photo. I mean, that is literally it. Now, it's a little different. It's overcoming isometric training. But the, my point is this. The muscles are under load without any movement. That's isometric in nature. That is called ISO tension. Here's how we can utilize this to your advantage. And I will say before I jump into this, there needs to be a little bit of mind muscle connection. Here's why I say we need that, the deadlift. For those that have been following me, I'm just recovering from a lower back injury from me being stupid and doing a deadlift on the ISO chain on TikTok. All right, had I been utilizing ISO tension, that more than likely would not have happened. Here's why. When I was pulling with everything I had here, I was pulling using my entire body, but I wasn't tensing everything. I was just pulling. Did anybody catch that? I was just pulling. Nothing was being tensed. Now, I'm incorporating ISO tension where? A core. 
tighten that up. Tighten everything up. It locks you in place. Um, the term that uh, subscriber and good friend of mine, Raymond Green mentioned is breathing beneath the shield. It's the perfect terminology for that. So once you tighten it up and you're pulling with the deadlift and keeping the core tight, I challenge you to do a deadlift on the ISO chain for six seconds, see what your number is, and then do it again, this time tightening up your stomach and pulling. You will notice a difference. You might notice that it actually goes down at first because it feels like you're trying to look left and right at the same time. You're trying to tighten this but pull at the same time. I promise you, you're slowing down to speed up. I promise you. This is very, very important and a fantastic tool in our arsenal to utilize on our ISO chain training. Totally recommend that we all try it. All right, so let's say for example, we're doing the bicep curl. I know that uh, a lot of people on the IsoChain Facebook group, myself included, even some of my clients, when we do it and we have correct forms, sometimes our forms hurt. Now, I would always tell someone, you gotta work on your forms because forms are usually a weak link with a lot of people. It's not even coming at anyone, it's just, it is what it is, myself included. Sometimes it lets me know I need to work on it. What helps is to tense the forearms up as you pull into the bar. It's going to alleviate some of that pain and you may notice you get a higher number. Search your squat, deadlifts. I've been tinkering with the RDL. I've been using the RDL as a physical therapy to heal my back. It has been working. Every single one of those. I tighten up my abs and the muscle groups in question. Now, when I try and hold multiple muscle groups, the level of difficulty for the isotension becomes a lot harder in my opinion. And that is going to lead to a later video called total body tension. If we could give each one a level of difficulty, isotension would be here and total body tension would be a, but utilizing total body tension is probably going to be the best possible way to utilize the iso chain to its utmost. Personal opinion, you might disagree. If you do, comment in the comment section below if you're familiar with iso tension and total body tension prior to this video. As I'm talking about this, hopefully this makes sense. Are you starting to put two and two together? Do you see how tightening up, having the muscle under load is giving you more power now to go into the iso chain workout? Great example, my deadlift with the iso chain. I know I mentioned it a couple minutes ago. When I release tension from my abs and I'm just pulling, I can't do the deadlift. It hurts my lower back. It's still recovering. It's not 100. But I say like in maybe another two to three weeks, I should be back to normal. But I'm not gonna take my chances. I've been utilizing isotension by tightening up my core. Now I'm pulling into the deadlifts, I'm pulling back into the 400s again. Now I'm not back to where the five, the mid fives like I was, but it's starting to get there. The interesting thing about that is I wouldn't be pulling for anything because as soon as I go over three without isotension in my abs, my lower back hurts because I'm just pulling and it's, it's not working. As soon as I bring isotension to the picture, not only does my number go up, I'm safer. The low row, a common machine slash exercise we see in most commercial gyms. It has been a staple for me and a favorite of mine for my back and biceps for many, many years. It's been in my program nine out of 10 times, just I do different variations to switch it up. But you know what? A couple years ago, I started to notice something. My numbers were getting really high. And so logically somebody might be like, okay, well your back just got stronger. Your biceps just got stronger. Yes and no. My low row, and this is not a flex, I'm not that person. I wanna say this to show you the power of isotension. I ended up doing isotension by accident for years until I found out the name. This is pretty cool. It's gonna go in reverse. I was able to max the, both the lat pull down and the low row a couple years ago. And I've been able to, to maintain maxing them with good form, not yanking on it and pulling all the way back or like rocking. I'm talking about solid form. What am I doing to allow me to move that type of weight? I only weigh 175. I tighten my core up. As soon as I go into the lift, the first thing I tighten isn't my back and my bicep, it's my ass. Each time, tighten it up. And I don't know where, at what point I started doing that, but no one taught me that. I just started doing that purely by instinct, I guess you'd call it. People might see that and they're just like, man, that, that waist that's on the body, he ain't gonna move none. So they're, 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 you're, you're about to go into it and then they're kind of looking at you like, and then you start moving and they're just like, 
but that's how I was doing it. Now my back and bicep, yeah, they are strong, but utilizing isotension gave me that extra edge to move it and with good form. Now I wanna tell you about an energy leak. And this is going to be huge in the total body tension video. I had an energy leak one time um, utilizing isotension for the lap pull down. This is at Planet Fitness. This was, I believe it was 2018. If not, it was 2019, one of those years. I'm pulling on the lap pull down. I come all the way down. This is max, 260 pounds. Come all the way down, squeeze. I pull my ass. How did I pull my ass cheek, yo? That shit was so fun. It wasn't funny at the time, yo, that shit hurt. As I, I let it go, I was like, yo, what the hell? Another time I did the same thing and my right calf was like, yo, it's gonna pop. Now you have the, the bar over top, like the pads over top my quads to keep myself down. It's a lot of weight, it weighs more than I do. Right, so I'm pulling down and I'm tightening up my calves as I'm pulling, that's what it was. Isotension, the calves were under load, keeping me solid as I'm pulling down. Right now, I just did it instinctually right now. So tightening it up as I come back down, it felt like I pulled my calf on a lat pull down. Now I did it wrong because I didn't target the right area. Now I should have targeted the muscles in question and the core, in my opinion, some might debate that. If you do, drop in the comment section below, let me know why. There was a leak and the balance of the, the power went to a different muscle group that it shouldn't have been at. And that's what caused the tightness and it felt like I pulled my calf out. Like I was doing a calf raise that was just too heavy and I pulled the muscle. That's what it felt like, but on a lat pull down. Now that was a failure of utilizing the technique. Have you used isotension? I want you to comment in the comment section below. I'd love to know your story, if you're familiar with it, or maybe there were times where you used it by accident. This is totally a real thing. And last but not least, do we start to see the power of utilizing isotension in the iso chain workout? This is pretty much iso chain gold. I feel like what's gonna end up happening is as we start to practice it as a technique, we may see a dip in numbers as we're trying to look left and right at the same time to get the technique and the form down, but while still doing the six seconds of hell, or if we're doing hypertrophy or endurance, whatever, we have an iso chain or on the squat for with the OG, whatever. But then you're gonna notice a sharp increase as we start to really get that mind muscle connection, the iso tension on point. But before we do that, the algorithm is gonna suggest some videos for you they're gonna come up in a couple seconds click on them check it out i'm sure it'll be awesome and we'll see you in the next one peace